and welcome to another edition of Military in Hawaii. My name is Calvin Griffin, and for those of you who are viewing this for the first time, we, this is really a recent program for me. I've been doing other media forums, video. But um, with this program, what we're going to be talking about is what's happening within the active duty and also the military and the um, veterans community. Uh, here in Hawaii, we have more than 100,000 veterans, and of course with the military, that's another number, another different story anyhow. But one of the things here in Hawaii is um, what we try to do in the military community and the veterans community is to network and find out what's going on. Here on the program, what I'm going to try to do, not try, what I'm going to do is bring information, like I said, that will be beneficial to you. We'll have individuals who are knowledgeable in many different aspects of what's happening with the military and the veterans community, uh, things in nature like with the VA, uh, services, uh, other things that, um, like I say, will be important to, uh, to your well being. The one thing I do try to stress is the fact that nowadays there's less than 1% of the total U.S. population that's involved in the, um, in the military experience. Uh, of course, that doesn't count the, the veterans. But the thing is, there are a lot of individuals who made great personal sacrifices to serve their country. And the one thing that we try to encourage, especially our uh, elected officials, to make sure that the promises that they made are kept to our military. Uh, we have a lot of individuals who, uh, it's a great career for many, uh, but there are some issues that need to be addressed. Here in our program, we're not going to, you know, beat up on any particular department or organization or uh, any personalities. The main thing what we're trying to do is systemic issues. Uh, if there's anything positive, uh, we're going to bring that out. If there's anything that needs to be addressed, we're going to address that also. It will be an open and honest dialogue. Uh, what I do encourage the viewers, if you want to call in, uh, one standing rule that I do have is that if there's anything that I or my guests say that you feel is an error, please contact us and we'll let you give you time to go ahead and air your um, your position um, because like I say the main thing here we want to be informative we don't want to be reactionary uh, we're not here to incite we're just as I say we're here to inform so if there's anything that you want to share if there's something an experience that you've been through uh, as a active duty individual or a um, veteran uh, please give us a call and uh, we'll be happy to go ahead and um, you know and engage in dialogue. The one thing that I do want to bring out, uh, a lot of people may not be familiar, there's an organization called the Oahu Veterans Center, and it's located in Foster Village. Uh, at the center, there's a lot of different activities going on. We have a lot of good things that's happening uh, as far as interactive between the, um, the veterans, military, and like I said, community. But still a lot of people may not be aware of what's going on there. Uh, what I do encourage you to do, if uh, you're interested in being supportive or if you need some information about what, some of the services that they provide, then uh, which you, can call, uh, you can call Claire at 422-4000. Uh, and that's Claire at 422-4000. And uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of good things that they do down there, and we're trying to get the word out about what's happening there. Uh, the other uh, thing I want to bring up before we get to a conversation with uh, Mr. Dennis Seagate um, is the fact that um, we have um, a system that's been put in place over here called the Veterans Treatment Court. With the Veterans Treatment Court, this is a system that's been set up, uh, it's been spearheaded by uh, Judge Ed Kubo, uh, to help veterans who um, say had any problems with the law. There's certain criteria that you have to meet, but they're also looking for mentors. These are individuals, prior service members, even active duty members, who might want to be mentors to individuals who are either um, involved in the uh, judicial system as a um, I wouldn't say a participant, but uh, that had problem that did time or whatever. But um, it's a very good program. It's been tried a couple places around the country. But I think as far as the track record is concerned, uh, what's being done over here is really um, ground moving, I mean, earth shaking. Uh, there's some very good people that's been involved as far as with the mentors and even the mentees. Uh, we have, there's quite a few of them that have uh, uh, graduated and themselves uh, came on board to uh, become a mentor, you know. So that's another issue you might want to deal with. But right now, uh, what I'd like to do is um, introduce Mr. Dennis Seagate to the program. Dennis, thank you for coming on board. 
Thank you for having me, Calvin. My pleasure. Anyhow, uh, just a background, like I try to be open and honest about my relationships with all, any guests that you know I have coming on board. You and I have known each other for quite some time, and uh, we think a lot, but of course we disagree on a few things also. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. But the main thing with you, uh, for the viewers who may not be familiar with you, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your background and some of the things that you're championing right now? Well, right. Uh, I've always been an advocate in the state legislature mm -hmm. because this is where I am. And I just came back from providing testimony today, and I also did that yesterday. Mm. Today's testimony came as a surprise. I was, I was called by one of the state senator's office and asked if I would submit testimony, and I agreed to do, do that. So. Yeah. That's where I had my breakfast. All right. I know that uh, you make frequent trips to Washington to talk to some of the so-called big players in the um, um, concerning the veterans of the military. Uh, what is the, with the new administration coming in, do you see any changes that's going to be really substantial, you know, that have not been addressed in the past? Nothing's changed in Congress. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting uh, for the State of the Union address uh, when our president addresses the full Congress, mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering what he's going to say about his friends in Congress, or he may just uh, come directly to the point and say, I know I don't have very many in here, yeah. but I'm still the president, so okay. we'll see. Yeah. There's one thing about, you know, right now, as far as the political issues, from time to time we'll touch on that, but right now the main thing we'll be concerning ourselves with is the different issues, systemic problems. I know that there's a couple of bills that you've been addressing that do affect the, um, the veterans here in Hawaii. And if you could share that information with our viewers. I didn't come prepared with the bill number. Oh, you know, encapsulated. But, uh, you know, yeah. uh, I'm very concerned, being a Vietnam veteran myself, mm -hmm. I'm very concerned about uh, Blue Water Sailors. Uh, their uh, presumption of being exposed to Agent Orange mm -hmm. was withdrawn uh, with the and uh, limited to anybody who just happened to have boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, we know that a lot of the symptoms are there among us. Mm -hmm. As we get older, we get uh, fall prey. Yeah. Our, you know, our immune systems, we fall prey to the symptoms. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been a strong advocate of that for a long time, uh, basing my argument on a, a, a very well-written, in my opinion, uh, a piece by the American Legion, and I've taken that to every each member of our delegation yeah. and asked them to support legislation as it comes down. Yeah, I, you know, one thing that we do, I mean, it's been discussed from time to time where it hits the press and, you know, there's a lot of uh, <coughs> play um, or interest at a certain point about certain veterans' issues. Of course, the blue water thing, uh, that's one thing. Agent Orange, there's a number of different things uh, that, you know, were, um, have been addressed for the longest time, but I don't, many of us veterans don't believe adequate, adequately enough, okay? There's very, there's a lot of systemic problems. The one thing that is rarely touched on in public is the fact that we have individuals who served in Vietnam or different areas, you know, and there's some things that may have, whichever way they developed, have been passed on to their you know, second generation to their children or whatever. A lot of people may not be aware that certain birth defects, uh, certain things that, um, yeah, mainly the birth defects, again, this is something that's not really talked about, you know. But if you're out there and if you happen, happen to be the, uh, you know, dependent or, you know, the child of a, a veteran and you are having medical issues, what you might want to do is check the, um, check with the VA. Uh, initially to find out what is in place, what programs there are to address this and see, you know, where <coughs> we can take it from there. Because now, you know, we're talking second and third generations. And um, again, a lot of people may, are not aware of this particular aspect of, uh, you know, the healthcare system anyhow. So well, this is this is very true situation. Mm -hmm. It's coming up more and more, especially with the personnel who were sprayed. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't directly sprayed. I served offshore yeah. on, a, on a, a naval vessel. Mm -hmm. And this would have been in, back in 1968. So, so far, I feel very fortunate that I'm not showing any Agent Orange symptoms of yeah. any d diseases or disorders that are associated with that. Mm -hmm. Carcinogenic, uh, what's a toxic chemical? What's a toxic? Toxic. Uh, Agent yeah. Orange is toxic. Oh, in yeah. fact, uh, slightly modified, it exists today. It's called Roundup. Mm. 
So yeah. and farmers was, beware. You see them out there spraying Roundup. They're wearing protective gear. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that uh, again, uh, individuals were. I think Fort Bragg or one of the two couple of military bases where they had problems with the water, but they didn't tell anybody about it until you know years later. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, issue things of that nature. Anyhow, and again, what I'm trying to do here is not to you know incite or try to you know cast any dispersions on our military or the, or the system. But the thing is, there are issues that need to be addressed. You know, and not, and because we're losing uh, you know, World War II veterans, I mean, we're really down into the uh, Losing a lot. How I many? Like they're almost all gone. They're almost all gone. And then we got the Vietnam, you know, Korean and Vietnam. Right. Um, and again, they, these people are still going through a lot of issues that um, have not been adequately addressed. Anyhow, the other thing that we I want to we'll be talking about in the future is what's happening with our female personnel. You know, there's still like certain unique situations. I think I touched on this briefly on another program, where um, some of our female personnel are saying not being. The issues that there's some things that still need to be clarified as far as the treatment, you know, with these individuals, um, and also, again, dependents. You know, we talked, uh, you and I touched on it briefly, the fact that sometime in the past uh, couple of years we had more suicides here in uh, the state of Hawaii with dependents than we had losses in actual combat. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are some of the other, you know, spillover things that a lot of people don't, aren't aware of: um, the dependents, the wives, the children. You know, even the husbands now, because you have uh, females are being deployed overseas, you know, so uh, the term dependent, you know, takes on a different uh, aspect anyhow. But um, again, these are the issues that we need to network with anyhow, and with the veterans out there or the military personnel. If you went through a situation or you know something about the system on how to help uh, another individual clarify certain aspects or claims or whatever. Again, call us, contact us, let us know, and like I said, we'll go ahead and share the information because that's what it's about. You know, like your experiences, my experiences. Mm -hmm. Sometime along the way, you learn little bits and pieces about what's going on that someone else may not know, you know, and this should have been imparted to you. And I think it's really incumbent on all of us to go ahead and do what we can, you know, not only do you put the veterans and military community, but on the civilian side, you know, for them to go ahead and be involved with what's happening because, again, we do have a lot of individuals who have made major sacrifices for our country now. Well, this is this is true. I remember my grandmother telling me that uh, she used to see the Civil War veterans, and he said, what a grumpy lot, and they drank too much beer. Well, maybe they were suffering from PTSD symptoms, and here we are in the 21st yeah. century. We're just now <coughs> recognizing that, that there's something to that yeah. other than uh, and I, I believe we, we had other terms for yeah. people who had that uh, emotional problem coming out of uh, the horrors of war. I mean, yeah. what does somebody who's never been there know about it? You certainly don't, you might get a glimpse from a Hollywood uh, movie. Okay. But, uh, I don't think, uh, I, I don't think anybody can. And so we don't talk about it because right. we don't expect anybody to, n to understand it. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of difficult at times. But I, I would like more for the VA to embrace the idea that the vet, all veterans are in their charge. Yeah. Not just the ones that knock on their door or, or raise cane in the media, mm -hmm. uh, every one of them. And uh, I can remember that Senate, now retired Senator Akaka once told uh, a meeting of us that the money is there. Ask for the benefits. Yeah, that's and it. So, it's there's nothing shameful for asking the VA to help you out. And then if, if the experience doesn't appear to be standard, mm. then uh, it's time to come to someone like Calvin and express your concerns. And we try to get you what, on that note, we're going to take a brief break, and we'll be back in a moment. But uh, feel free to call us here at 415-871-2474, uh, and we'll be back in a moment. Hi, and thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Justine Espiritu, and I host the Hawaii Food and Farmer series with my co-host Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. Every week, we bring on farmers as well as all the other individuals and organizations that help support a thriving, sustainable food system. In fact, it's interesting to learn what others are doing so you don't have to be a Hawaii resident or producing food on Hawaii to be featured on the show, like today's guest, Wyatt Bryson of Jewel of the Forest and Michael Lab Solutions. 
Aloha. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being on the show. Um, I love uh, seeing what you guys do, and I really support your mission. And uh, it's really nice being back in Hawaii. And uh, thank you again. It's an honor. So you can see guests like Wyatt every Thursday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. Okay, and welcome back to the program. We're going to continue our conversation uh, with Dennis and also discuss a few other things, uh, of course, related to the, you know, the military. Um, like I said, there's so many different things that we can talk about, so many different aspects, you know, that uh, not one individual is really an expert on, you know, the overall military and veteran experience, uh, which you talked about briefly before we um, took the break, is that with the VA, you know, like we all have uh, is quite a few, we hear more a lot of horror stories about what's happening with the system. The one thing that I say, once you get into the system, as far as the medical treatment that you get, is really superior. I mean, it's really great. You can't really uh, complain about that. But one of the things that uh, we do have to address, and been going on for the longest time, is that's what's happening systemically with the benefits, getting into it, you know. There's a report that came out uh, about a year and a half ago where we lost like 306,000 vets waiting to get into the system, you know. So I think a lot of people are really, um, they want to see, of course, with the new administration, if there's going to be a more proactive um, addressing of the, um, you know, this issue with the uh, with the VA. You know, here locally, we have a lot of dedicated people, but we still need to go ahead and keep their feet to the fire and you know, firmly address. You know, as you mentioned, one of the things is that we are military personnel and veterans. These are benefits that they've earned, you know. There's nothing that somebody's given them or anything else. I mean, we have when we have people who do four, five, six, 12 tours and come back, and then, you know, once they get out of the system, then they still have to go through another battle to get what they've earned. Because one thing that uh, a lot of people don't realize, but the, uh, if they're deprived of their benefits from the VA or some other source that uh, has been designated to help them out, then it becomes a drain, um, with, uh, that may be a wrong term, but it becomes a burden on the local communities in the form of, you know, medical um, treatments that have to be issued or whatever, food stamps, things of this nature, because it's coming out of the veteran's pocket. And then, like say, if they can't adequately address that financial issue, then, of course, there's a lot of things that come back to the community or the taxpayers, but we have to do this, you know. So, um, you know, I know there's a lot of things that need to be addressed. and. Uh, have you, what changes do you, have you seen or what do you think is, what is your take on it? Am I misspeaking about anything? Or? You are. Uh, what's significant mm -hmm. is uh, that everybody in Hawaii, <coughs> we've been issued a, uh, a choice card mm -hmm. in addition to our health benefits uh, photo ID card. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been I issued a choice card because we don't have a VA hospital here. Mm -hmm. We have a clinic. And so everybody who resides in Hawaii have a choice card. And I have, what is significant is I have noticed that without even asking, mm -hmm. that the VA will, uh, will outsource your, your health care needs mm -hmm. to, the, to the local uh, health care industry. Yeah. And uh, one of the members of the Congress who happens to represent individuals in the El Paso, Texas area, he got the VA there. Mm -hmm to agree to this plan to outsource what they absolutely couldn't care for in a timely fashion yeah. and that would be the Fort Bliss area so if anybody's listening in Fort Bliss and they want to talk about how their VA benefits uh, are working for them there might might give us some insight on it but uh, I can see eventually that the VA will outsource mm -hmm. everything to the community yeah. um, and there's very little that the VA does that the community can't do yeah. if it's called upon. Now, individuals working in, in the VA, they have nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. If the patients are all outsourced, uh, they can find jobs on the outside. 
No. In, in the healthcare industry, and yeah. it'd be probably just as good paying as what the VA pays. Yeah. It, you know, it's just that you and I, we both get tired. We talk about this offline a lot anyhow, but the way that every couple of months there seems to be some new problem that's been identified with the VA, you know. Mm. And again, here in Hawaii, we do have problems, but the thing is, it's not as extensive as it is on other parts of the, of the country, whatever, you know. But still in all, whether it's here or El Paso, Texas, or some other place, okay, if the veteran is not being taken care of, mm. then collectively, of course, we need to go ahead and address that issue because if it can happen there, it can happen here, you know. So we just want to make sure that the whole system is, you know, addressing, you know, be, it's being addressed properly, you know, you know so that's what we try. Well, it seems to me that uh, bringing the Oahu Veterans Council mm -hmm. into the picture, mm -hmm. that the, uh, I call them advisors mm -hmm. from the VA, uh, anybody who doesn't represent the, a nonprofit such as I do, uh, I call them. I like to look, view them as advisors. They seem to be uh, getting much better to address the issues we bring to them mm -hmm. rather than trying to uh, toot their own horn. Mm -hmm. So they just kind of sit there and they'll sum, very briefly summarize mm -hmm. what we've accomplished since the last month we met and we've been asking for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they seem to be much better and, uh, and really eager. And then State Office of Veteran Services they're there for us too, as okay. their local advocates. Well, uh, yeah, I see the improvement because me being a council member myself with my organization, excuse me, <clears throat> it's the. I see improvements, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that it can't get better, okay? So it can we need, be better. The, the council needs to be more proactive, not only, like say, with the members of the different organizations that's represented, mm -hmm. but also with the number of veterans over here who are not participants in any type of, work, I mean, any type of um, veterans organization, mm -hmm. you know? Because a lot, a lot of times, like say, I've talked about, you know, everybody knows how I feel about, you know, certain issues, and the thing is, we have to give, be the voice for all veterans. Like say, the, the council needs to do be more proactive about that. You know, they used to be. and again, they used to be, but you know, hopefully in the future there's good, you know, pretty decent leadership with it. But still, in all, they need to go ahead and really step up to the plate, put their, you know, take their foot off the brake and let's go full force to see what we can do to address, you know, a lot of these issues. Because what I see is that. The veterans we have over here with the homeless, um, a number of different things, you know. Mm -hmm. If veterans don't mind helping one another, you know, if you give them the opportunity, you know. But sometimes you have so many bureaucratic rules and regulations that's in place where even if you wanted to help somebody, you couldn't, you know. Sure. And I think that needs to be addressed and it needs to be eliminated where if there is, you know, someone that's willing to go ahead and step up and help out, then allow them to do so, you know. It's about, because one thing with the with veterans in the military is that the spirit of giving back, you know, if you're willing to serve your country, you're giving up a lot of time and efforts and everything else, but that doesn't end when it takes off the uniform because uh, there's so many veterans out there that will say who may be in not dire straits, but let's like, say need help. Okay, mm. But a lot of them would say, well, look, I'm in bad trouble right now, but there's got to be another veteran out there that needs the help better more than I do, you know, and they will say use it or lose it. Yep. Not true. Right. When we're talking about the... Um, the mill I mean, the appropriations and everything else with the VA, okay, for all, all those veterans out there who say, well, you know, um, I'm comfortable, I'm all right, okay, that's fine, all right. But if you're entitled to certain benefits and you don't use it, then what happens, all those numbers that they start calculating in Washington or wherever they do it at anyhow, then that's reflected on the amount of appropriations that's going to be provided to the veterans overall. So you can sign up for it, you don't have to use it, but the main thing, let them know that you're participating or you're you're you know you're you're there you're in the you're around you know so even if you were personally well off or whatever you gotta think in terms of just you know the numbers okay and again that's why I say as far as use it or lose it you know that's what we well yeah. I, I do notice that uh, good if we get together again before the end of this session of the state legislature I'll mm -hmm. tell you how active my uh, fellow delegates of the Oahu Veteran Council have been Good, yeah. in the state legislature yeah. uh, so far mm -hmm. uh, today, uh, as of yesterday and today, two, mm -hmm. two times I've been in the, uh, in the legislature providing testimony, there mm -hmm. hasn't been any other 
Now, I do know that some of our delegates are hidebound by their own bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. So if you bring a, a legislative issue to their attention today, they're not ready to provide testimony for three weeks. Well, that may be the third or fourth go around, or the bill may already have been tabled. Mm. So they're, they're not they're not able, by definition of their own uh, uh, bureaucracy, able to respond in time to be effective as an advocate in the state legislature. I've noticed that. Oahu, Oahu Veterans Council leadership knows that, yeah. but uh, they're comfortable, and most of the veterans organizations, they feel more comfortable uh, out there in the grassroots as volunteers, and my question for them is, is well, if, if the services provided to veterans is all mostly provided by volunteers, then what is the VA doing? Yeah. They should be. They should be having an executive director, and anybody, all the hundred thousand people that represent or live in this community mm -hmm. called veterans and military, they're well aware of all their all the services that the VA does provide, not just uh, the other. Yeah. Well, that that's another thing I want to touch on. Also, there's a lot of different. Right over here, there's like close to 108 different vet organizations, mm -hmm. subdivisions, and all that stuff, you know, 108, roughly, okay. Mm -hmm. With all the, sometimes there's an overlap where you have one organization that provides certain benefits to, or they want to provide it to the veterans community, all right, but yet and still, the, the disconnect between the different organizations where, like say, if you know that there is another organization that has um, certain resources that you don't have, you know, by sharing that information, you know, and I think that, say, that would be more beneficial if we are working together, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that we really don't see that extent of the cooperation, you know, between the organizations. I mean, there's a lot of dedicated people out there, but okay, you know, if there's someone that's doing a bang-up job in certain areas that you're not handling, then why not pass that information on? You know, you don't have to be, uh, a lot of people don't look, you know, you know, in these different groups are looking for the limelight, but, you know, sometimes they seem very, they want to play close to the chest. Well, this is ours, you know, our thing or whatever, you know. Mm. And I think, silos. Yeah, and they need to get past that where, okay, let's think of what's good for the whole, you know. And even organ veterans out there who are not part of any organizations, Get involved, okay, because you don't have to be part of anything. I mean, the only thing you have to be part of is just a movement to do something that's going to be proactive, okay? So whether the labeling and everything else, and you know, when more people are trying to get past that as far as a partisanship where, you know, I'm an individual, I care, let me go ahead and do my thing, you know, as far as that's concerned, you know? So you don't have to go under the umbrella of some other organization or a leader, you know? Because like I tell people, if you want a leader, look in the mirror. That's where that leader is coming from, you know? Not for someone is in Washington, the state capital, anything else. We have to go ahead in our own communities, become the leaders of tomorrow, you know. Set the example, walk the walk, talk the talk, as you say, you know. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, with 108 organizations, you could call into question how effective are they. Could They could be participating in a, uh, a divide and conquer. Yeah. You spend so much time uh, questioning one another, uh, they don't have time to, to bring the question to the state legislature no. or to write letters uh, as uh, representing X number of members in uh, Y organization to every member of the Hawaii delegation when there's an issue that should be addressed. Yeah. Well, so, we, we and, and many organizations, I'll be frank with you, they're not allowed to do that without, without uh, permission of their leaders. Yeah. I've noticed that... Uh, some of the major ones, and I won't name any names, because mm -hmm. then you'll probably get phone calls. That, no, I, uh, I can handle that, it. Like say, we're here, we're going to tell the truth. It'd be okay you know. to get a phone call. No good. But uh, they just, uh, they, they, uh, the, the local uh, chapters, posts, whatever they call themselves, yep. branches, uh, they, they don't really feel that they can do of any service to their members by going and, and uh, supporting or even opposing legislation yeah. that the, our state is proposing that right. affects them. They yeah. just don't go. In that case, you need the new leadership, that's all. We're getting down to the wire and if you okay. were getting down to the wire, yeah. But uh, any final thoughts before we wrap things up? Well, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think you're going to have any competition <laughs> because uh, this is... Uh, this is really a good thing that we bring this not only the voice, yeah. but then the face behind the voice. Yeah. Well, that, uh, uh, 
and they know they they know that you're here to uh, make a change when that's and indicated. We're trying to okay. And I do see you in yep. the state legislature when it's time when yeah. it's time to go. A little bit later down the road, but anyhow, yeah. to wrap things up in here real quick, like say. Uh, Tune in next time, and again, if you have any information, want to share anything with our the other viewers, or again, if you have any statements that you want to correct that anything I said or whatever, please feel free to do so. We're here to be, again, proactive. We're not to be reactive, but like I said, we want to be here to be supportive. Mm -hmm. So if you have any information that you want to get out there or share, please get in touch with us. This is what this program is for. We're not going to go ahead and whitewash anything. We're not going to go ahead and throw bombs or anything like that, but we will a hold of certain individuals accountable if they're not doing their job. But again, I want to thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time here on the program.